This is Advanced Algebra Lesson A3, Properties of Inverse Functions. The big idea of this lesson is that when a function has an inverse, the composite of the function and its inverse in either order is the identity function. We'll explore this a little bit after we first learn how to find the inverse of a function. So we kind of have a formula here set up. So if I want to find the inverse of f of x that is equal to 1 over 2x, first thing I want to do is replace f of x with y. So now it's y equals 1 over 2x. The next step is to switch my value for x and y. And we did that one time in, my, in the last lesson in 8.2 where we changed the rule. So we take our x and our y and we flip-flop them. And so now we need to solve for y. So we're going to multiply both sides by y. So that leaves me with xy equaling 1 over 2 divided by x, which is the same as y equaling 1 over 2x. So we substitute f to the negative 1 power, which is the inverse of x, for y. And so now we have our inverse rule. We're going to try this again with the function h of x, which is 4 times x plus 7 minus 3 all over 2, and we want to find the inverse of h. So remember, we're going to take out the h mapping x onto this and, and just substitute y for that. Then we're going to flip our x and our y va um, variables, and now we have to solve for y. So now we need to get rid of this 2, so we're going to multiply both sides by 2. That gives me 2x equaling 4 times y plus 7 minus 3. Then we can go ahead and distribute the 4, so that's 4y plus 28 minus 3. We're going to combine some like terms here, so we're going to combine 28 minus 3, which is 25. And then I am going to move the 25 over to the other side and divide by 4. So now I have um, 2x minus 25 over 4 equaling y. I can simplify my fraction a little bit here. I can have 2 over 4 be 1 half x minus 25 over 4. And then I can substitute y for h to the negative 1 power, which is just the inverse of h. And that is our inverse function of 4 times x plus 7 minus 3 all over 2. Now that we know how to find the inverse of a function, we need to explore the inverse function theorem a little bit more. Two functions, f and g, are inverse functions if and only if. For all x in the domain of f, g of f of x is equal to x. And for all values of x in the domain of g, f of g of x equals x. Now remember we stated earlier in the chapter that composite functions are not commutative, but if, we ha if functions are inverses of each other, they are commutative and they equal x. So let's take a look at this example that I have here. I have f of x equaling 12x minus 4 and g of x equaling 4 plus x over 12. So I want to explore what g of f of x is. So I'm going to take f of x and put that into g of x. So this 12x minus 4 is going right here. So that looks like x plus 12x minus 4 all over 12. And if I simplify that, the 4s are going to cancel out. And I'm going to get 12x over 12. So there I get x. OK. Now on the other side, I'm going to try it again, only I'm going to go f of g of x. So I'm going to take g of x, and I'm going to insert it into this one over here. So now I get 12 times 4 plus x over 12. 12s are going to cancel. I'm going to get, so then I'm going to get 4 plus x minus 4. 4s are going to cancel, and I get x. So here's an example where g of f of x equaled x, and f of g of x equaled x. So since both cases happened, then I can say these two functions are inverses of each other. In earlier lessons, you worked with the functions worked with the functions with equations y equals x to the power of n, taking the nth power, and y equals x to the 1 over n power, so you're taking the nth root. For all x values greater than or equal to 0, it is reasonable 
easy, reasonably easy to show that these functions are inverse functions. So we're going to explore the power function inverse theorem. So if f of x equals x to the power of n, and g of x equals x to the power of 1 over n, and the domains of f and g are the sum of non-negative real numbers, then f and g are inverse functions. So let's take a look at their graphs a little bit. So if I look at the function of f of x equals x to the sixth, we know that we've designed or defined it as the set of non-negative num real numbers. So we know that our value is just going to be the the right hand side of this parabola or this curve here. And we know that the inverses of each other are the reflections over the line y equals x. So the domain of f is the set of non-negative real numbers. So the inverse of that, which is going to be x to the power of 1, 6, the domain of the inverse of f is the set of non-negative real numbers. So now if we look at h of x equaling x to the 6, and we define h is a set of real numbers, then the inverse of h is not a function because we would not have, it would not pass that vertical line test here. So the basic differences that we have with these two graphs is on the first one we restricted the domain to the set of non-negative real numbers. When we restrict the domain, then the inverses of each other are the function and its inverse are both functions. But if we don't restrict the domain of the first one, then um, our inverts will not be a function even though our original was a function. We will explore this idea more in class with some more examples. This concludes Lesson 8-3.